45 years, 45 years. That's how long it was. Hello and welcome to Sea Life TV. I'm Daryl Chesser, your host for today. And I thought I would come and talk to you about 45 years. I think the name of this is going to be 45 years. That works for me. But as I was reading the scriptures the other day, I began to come on to the story of, uh, you know, the, the Hebrew children out in the wilderness and the story of Caleb in particular, one of the two spies that uh, Joshua along with him that came back with a good report. Congregation ultimately listened to the bad report, the evil report. They went with what they saw with their eyes and not with what they saw in the past with God. In other words, they saw Joshua and Caleb had seen God do amazing things. So had these others. Joshua and Caleb had seen the, the oceans open. The, the plagues had come. They'd seen the entire Egyptian army drowned in the sea. They'd seen uh, a fire by day, a cloud by night for 45 years now. They'd seen God's provision through the good and the bad. God was there, his protection, his grace, his mercy, his kindness. It was all there. They'd seen it. They looked back to that and said, he's been faithful till now. I believe him for what's next. So I'm going to go with this story because of the times that we're in how I feel about it, and most certainly some of you may. So, 45 years. It's a long time to wait, obviously, for a promise. But Caleb, one of the spies sent by Moses to spy out the land, was determined that he would receive his promise, no matter what. In Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 through 14 in the King James uh, Version, I'm going to be watching, uh, reading this. Then the children of Judah came into Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jep Jephunneh, the Ken Kenizzite, I should have gone over this, right? Said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me and thee and Kadesh Barnea. Forty-five years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to Kadesh Barnea to, it, to spy, not the awards, you know, not a I spy, not a movie, not the any, uh, I spy, but it was to spy out the land to, you know, not espionage in the sense of, well, yeah, exactly it was espionage. They went in to see the strength of the army. They went in to see the 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 land and what it was. They went in to see everything that, that could possibly be there. Was it true? So uh, Caleb goes on. He goes, and I, would, I brought word again as it was in my heart. I brought a good report back to the children of Israel. Good news. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. <laughs> but I wholly follow the Lord. Remember that phrase. But I wholly follow the Lord. And Moses swore on that day, hearing all of this, saying, Surely the land whereon the Moses, back in the day when they crossed the Red Sea, when they, when the, they went into the land and the, the ten spies led people astray, uh, Moses then prophesied according to what the word said that day. And Caleb's looking back at that. Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance. Speaking to Caleb now, Moses, prophesying from God. And your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord, my God. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. Caleb, now he's speaking again in the present. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. As he said, these 40 Five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old, 85 years old. And yet I am as strong this day as I was in that day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come back. Now, therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spoke in that day. Give me this, look, this mountain that Moses uh, spoke for the Lord on to Jalob 45, 40 years earlier, 45 years earlier. Give me this mountain. 
and that the cities there in this land, he says, uh, he says, for I heard in that day how the Anakims, the giants were there and that the cities were great and fenced. But if so, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua heard that and he blessed Caleb and he gave Caleb the son of Jephunneh of Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenzite unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord his God. He wholly followed the Lord his God. Caleb was ready. He had waited through the wasted years of the assembly's wandering until an entire generation had died out, had just gone on. Caleb was still there. 45 at 85, his finger was still on the trigger. Give me this mountain. Joshua, who also had brought a good report with Caleb back to Moses and the people, now stood as the leader and rejoiced to give his friend the promise that Moses had made about the land to Caleb. Joshua blessed him. Joshua, Yahushua, is a type or a shadow of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And he blessed Caleb with the promise because Caleb came and said, this is the promise. I didn't make the promise. He said, I didn't make the promise. I didn't make the promise. You made the promise. Your servant, Moses, told me about the promise. I believed him. I'm here today. I've stayed alive here today because of the grace of God and the mercy of God. I'm still here. I don't care what happened to the people that went before me. They've run their course. Good or bad, they ran it. I'm still here. But as for me, the promises of God are still valid. I want my mountain. So Caleb wholly followed the Lord, the scripture tells us. He believed the Lord about the promised land. And he gave the good news, a good report to the people from his heart when he came back. He saw the same giants. He, same, he saw the same walled cities. He saw the same just, oh my gosh. And it's, a beautiful land is too. It was a beautiful land. It, it, it fit perfectly with what God said, but it was like it scared the others. But to Caleb and Joshua, it was like, hey, I couldn't get myself out of Egypt. And God did it. I couldn't keep myself in the wilderness for these 40 years. God did it. And if he said, we can take this land, no matter what's there, I couldn't do it myself. God will do it. So 45 years later, Caleb still believed the promises made to him in the name of the Lord. Many of you may believe that he wholly followed the Lord in this in this uh, readings that we just did, when it says he wholly followed the Lord and it was that was in his disciplined lifestyle or his arduous keeping of the commandments and his charitable good works. Maybe, maybe. But I contend that God has always looked at the heart of a man and his faith, at his belief in God and his determination to keep believing until he sees what was promised him. Jesus told Mary after her brother Lazarus had died and just before Jesus raised him from the dead, Mary, didn't I tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of the Lord? The writer of Hebrews penned these words in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 through uh, 15, and I'm reading again in the King James. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swear by himself saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Are we ready for our mountain? Are we ready to kick the giants in the fanny and take our mountain? As Caleb spoke in the passage above, as my strength was then when I heard the promises, so even now is my strength. Right now, I don't care what is past. I don't care where your health is. I don't care where your wealth is. I don't care what your age is. Even as my strength is now, it is as it was back then. I didn't get here by my own strength and I can go forward in his strength, not my own strength. So my strength to believe is as strong as it, it, today as it is 
yesterday, the day I first heard the gospel, the day I first believed the promises. My hope, my strength is the same today as it was then. I still believe, regardless of what my eyes see, regardless of what the news media says, regardless of what scientists or doctors or educators or academia says or other prophets and believers that are, stop it. Our faith is in God alone, not in this government, not in science or doctors. Our faith is in God. Caleb spoke the truth when everybody else decided to speak their fear. His strength was in the promises, not in his own effort. It was the promise that kept him going. It was the promise he desired. It was the promise that was the prize. Have we seen all the promises of God fulfilled in our own lives? Do we even still believe the promises of God? Jesus wrote these words in 1 John, for whatever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And I would put in there our faith in the promise in Christ Jesus. Do we still believe the good news? I will tell you what I see. I see the church growing and growing and growing. I see hope, hope multiplying and filling the people of God. I see faith in God's promises through Christ Jesus rising up in every believer. I see the whole earth being filled with his glory. You know why I see that? Because his word talks about it. His word promises it, that the stone that was cut from the mountain will come down and crack the world system and make it crumble, and that rock will grow until it fills the whole earth, and the glory of the Lord will fill the whole earth. That rock is Christ Jesus. The promise that was given to Abraham, I will bless you and I will bless the families of the earth, the good news, through Christ Jesus. Folks, we may see bad things on the news and on social media, and sure enough, we do, but there are amazing things happening out there and around the world in, and here in the States with, and in the States here with people coming to know the Lord, people being healed, people being saved by the multitudes. I mean, young people, old people, it doesn't matter. Uh, faith, Christ Jesus is doing a great work. I know we hear a lot about church, get up and do your thing. Take the mountains. Hey, dudes, God, give me the mountain. Give it to me. The same way I walked to this point in my life, I will walk into that dead gum mountain, and that's not by my strength, but by his. Darkness is terrified. They're not winning, they're terrified. God is glorified in the name of, Je of Jesus is shouted from the mountains and it's being shouted from the mouths of athletes and teenagers and celebrities. And if you can believe it, even Christians are doing some shouting of the name of God. I will leave you once again with this passage of scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 through 22. For all the promises of God in him Christ Jesus, are yes, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establish us, establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, our heavenly Father. He hath also seated us and given us the Spirit in our hearts. In his strength, in his promise, not by our might, not by our own power, but by his spirit, by his spirit, saith the Lord. Give me my mountain.